Hello everyone, today we'll be going over API 3's QRNG service, what it is and what it actually means for the entire API 3 ecosystem. Most smart contract platforms today typically emulate a deterministic virtual machine, which means that they cannot generate their own random numbers. In such cases, the random numbers need to be provided from outside the chain using an oracle. Another, cave another caveat with this is that the random numbers are pseudo-random numbers that are generated through machine code. At API3, we have partnered with a QRNG provider who supplies random numbers via a quantum phenomena. This means that the numbers that you do get are truly random. One of the big things that we did at API3 is that we made the service completely free for anyone to use on multiple chains. So we are currently live with the service on Arbitrum, Avalanche, BSC, Phantom, Gnosis, Metis, Milko Media, Moonbeam, Moonriver, Optimism, Polygon, and RSK. To showcase how easy it is to use the QNG service, I'll be deploying my own smart contract that will mint an NFT based on a random number. My smart contract will request from the QNG provider a random number and the random number will then be provided through the QNG air node to the smart contract. So let's get started. We will first define the Solidity version, which is 0.8.9, and then we'll define three import statements. The first import statement is the RRP requester v 0sol This basically says that this contract is a RRP requester, and it will be requesting an air node for some data, in this case, which is randomness. The second import statement is the ERC721. Since this will be minting an NFT, we need the ERC721 standard. The third import statement is the ownable import statement, which means that this contract has the ownable construct. Now that we have our import statements finalized, we can start writing our smart contract. The purpose of this contract is to mint an NFT of a random character. So we'll call our contract random character and have it inherit RRP requester v0, ERC721 and ownable. We've created the random character contract and also defined the struct within this random character contract called character. And each character has a set of predefined attributes, namely strength, intelligence, mana, experience, and name. And these are set randomly whenever a new character is created. So I've gone ahead and added a bunch of things that we will need in this contract to complete it. Uh, namely a characters array that defines all of the characters that exist within the contract. The A node address, the endpoint ID and the sponsor wallet are things I'll get to in a moment. Uh, moving ahead we have the expecting request ID, uh, request with ID to be fulfilled. So every time we make a randomness request, we don't know if it has been fulfilled or not. So this mapping keeps track of that. The request to character name, uh, each request for randomness is tied to the character's name. That's what this mapping keeps, a track, keeps track of. The request to sender and the request to token ID. So each character has a unique ID that represents it. So that is, that is a map to the request of the randomness. And the request to sender is which sender or the person minting it uh, is the request tied to. So I've gone ahead and defined the constructor. The constructor should accept the A node RRP address as the argument because the RRP requester needs that as an argument. And since we inherit RRP requester, we need to supply this argument to RRP requester v0. Uh, I've also uh, inherited ERC721, so I also need to define the arguments for ERC721. Uh, in this case, it's the name of the token. So the name of the token, I'll just call it Ranking of Kings, and the symbol is ROK. Now that we've defined the constructor, we need to define some functions that will help us create these random characters and also view these random characters within the contract. But before all that, we need to define the function that sets the request parameters. Uh, what I have here is the set request parameters function 
what it does is it sets the air node i air node endpoint id and sponsor wallet that we provide to the public variables that we have in the contract now the air node is the address of the q1g provider that we have and it is the source from which the random numbers are actually generated so we need to tell this contract that please point to this source to get the random numbers the endpoint id is the path uh, within the air node that we want to query so we want since we want only a single random number we we, we want to query the path that provides only a single random number. The sponsor wallet is the wallet that actually full, makes the fulfillment transaction. Uh, the air node is the one fulfilling the request, so it's making a request, and we need to we need to tell it which wallet to use in order to make the request because uh, we need to fund this wallet, and uh, then only then will the air node be able to make the fulfillment transaction. Now that the request parameters have been set, we need to define functions within the smart contract that will help us actually create these random characters. The first function will request for randomness to the air node and then the air node will then fulfill this request for randomness within the second function that will then actually mint the NFT. So we have these two functions that will work in tandem with each other. Of the two functions, let's start off by first defining the function that makes the request to the air node. Uh, let's call this function request new random character and have it take the name uh, of the character as input. We'll make the make a full request to anode RRP and supply the anode address, the endpoint ID, the uh, sponsor address, in this case being the contract itself, the sponsor wallet derived from the sponsor address, and the fulfillment address, uh, along with its uh, fulfillment function. So having made this full request, we will get back a request ID Using this request ID, we will set all the mappings within this function, namely the expecting request ID with ID to be fulfilled. We'll set this to true. And we'll also set the request to character name and request to sender to the res uh, respective name and message sender. Once the request has been made to the Airnode RP protocol, we'll wait for it to be fulfilled by the QNG provider's Airnode. Um, the QNG provider's air node will fulfill it on this function since this is the function we define in the request. While fulfilling, it will you supply the arguments of the request ID and data. And we will use the request ID to see if this is actually a request that is awaiting fulfillment. If it is not awaiting fulfillment, we will revert. Otherwise, we will decode the data and get back the random number. Using this random number, we will set the attributes of our character arbitrarily and then push this character to the array, uh, to the character's array. Finally, we will mint and send it to the, to the user that actually made the randomness request along with the ID of the... Finally, let's define a view function that will help us get back the character stats based on the token ID of the character. Uh, all right, now we can finally compile and deploy this contract on our testnet. So let's compile our contract. And it should compile pretty easily. Uh, you should make sure that you're using 0 0.8.9 and Solidity and default version. And you can click on compile. And you might see this license error, but that's fine. Oh, and make sure you're compiling the random character contract, not I here, not R. Oh, yep. Compile. Yep. So that's working fine. Uh, then we can head over to the deploy tab. Uh, the environment we want is injected web three. And I have some testnet ETH right here. Uh, but you can go ahead and choose the girly network, which is the one I'm using right now. 
and let's use the random character contract as our deployment contract so we need to supply in the inode rp address for this so let's head over back to the documentation and let's look for girly this is girly so let, i will copy over the girly contract copy and paste and let's click on deploy and deploy so while that's deploying let's just have a look it should be done quite fast yep uh, it's deployed now the first thing we need to do is we need to set the request parameter so let's go ahead and set the a node address the endpoint id and the sponsor wallet uh, to get the NR address, we go back to the documentation and go to the API providers. In the API providers, we look for ANU quantum random numbers, and in that we have the NR address. So we copy this and we copy and we paste it here. Cool. Next, we look for the endpoint ID. The endpoint ID is also available here and we just want for one random number so we copy this one we do not want an array of random numbers we just want one if you want an array then you can choose this endpoint ID but we just want one random number. we copy this and we paste it here the final step is we need to derive a sponsor wallet now sponsor wallets are the wallets that will make the actual fulfillment transaction so we need to derive them using the anode, uh, anode address and the anode expub as well as the address of the contract itself. So we will copy the address of the contract and then we need to run a command uh, to derive the sponsor wallet. Uh, I have the command pulled up right here on my other screen, but I'll just share it here. And the command is basically, you know what, I'll just show you where you can find the command. So you just type your sponsors and you type do dry sponsor wallet. And you can see this is the address to derive the sponsor wallet this is the command to derive the sponsor wallet so you copy this and you paste it here and you fill in oops, sorry so you fill in the sponsor address which is the address of our contract oops, bad so the sponsor address is the address of my contract, which is this. So I'll paste that here. The A node address is the address of the A node. The QRNG A node, we copy this. We paste it here. And finally, the XPUB is the a nodes extended public key this is also available in the documentation if we go back and yep right here so this is the a nodes xpub and we paste it. and that's how you derive a sponsor wallet and we get back this which is the sponsor wallet of this contract we copy that and we paste it and we click on confirm so this transaction is now online but we've basically uh, set the request parameters and now all we need to do is request 
for a name. But before we do that, before we do that, we need to make sure that the sponsor wallet that we've just derived, we need to make sure that it's funded because this is the one that will be making the fulfillment transaction. So I'll send it some funds, a very small amount for testing purposes. And I'll click on confirm. And it's being sent. So while it's being sent, I will make sure that the air node address has been set. Yes, the air node RP address, yes. The endpoint ID, yes and everything else looks fine okay now that that's done uh, and we send the money over to the sponsor wallet we need to basically just request for a random character request new random character okay let's call him ben the character that we want to create and click on confirm so this transaction is actually the transaction we are making to a node rp um, and this will then be fulfilled and hopefully we will have an nft minted to us so let's see if, if this transaction is complete so the transaction has been completed for a while now and we can go in and see that there has been a transaction, an internal transaction to a node RRP. So this was the make full request. And if we open that, we can see that there has been a fulfillment transaction in the past two minutes. This is probably the random number that we requested. And now it has fulfilled. So we probably have minted our NFT. If I open up this, oh, we have minted uh, a ranking of kings token id zero nft and we sent it to our address if i open up my address we can see that yes we do indeed have this nft yep um so that went well uh and if i go back and if i look for stats for my character and i input my token id which is zero I can see that I have received back the stats, which are my strength is very high, but my intelligence is pretty low. So then you need to up your intelligence a bit. And my mana is 20. Experience is zero because we've hard coded to be zero. Uh, but overall, it looks like the randomness request worked and we've actually created and minted a random character based on randomness. Uh, so that's how easy it is to use API 3 SQL service. It is completely free to use on any of these chains. If you need to know more about how you can use this, you can always head over to our docs where we have the full guide available. We also have uh, a repository showcasing other examples on how you can use it to request from say uh, a, an array of random numbers instead of a single random number mm -hmm.